On a cold spring night in 1944, deep in the heart of occupied France, German radar controllers huddled around an array of cathode ray screens, the air thick with tension and cigarette smoke. Suddenly, the unthinkable happened. America's shadowy bombers, long plagued by detection, simply vanished from the Luftwaffe's early warning grids. The operators exchanged frantic whispered queries. Was it sabotage? Faulty hardware? Or had the Allies finally cracked the secret the Reich swore was infallible? What happened that night rewrote military engineering forever, revealing the hidden genius behind American stealth design and sparking a bitter shockwave across German science and strategy. How did these American engineers, thousands of miles from battle, outsmart one of the most advanced electronic defense webs ever built? What mind-bending innovation led entire formations of heavy bombers bypass the Reich's eyes without firing a shot? And how, with every ticking minute, did the skies above Europe shift in a way the world would never forget? It was a feat that stunned military scientists, embarrassed Nazi engineers, and shifted the fate of the Western Front almost overnight. Yet buried beneath so many winning headlines, the story of how America's stealth innovation reversed the fortunes of war is more incredible, more technically jaw-dropping, than anyone could guess. Today, we'll expose the one secret that rewired enemy thinking propelled the Allies to new heights and redefined what it meant to be invisible in enemy territory. Are you ready for the truth behind America's impossible escape from German radar? Stay tuned because every two minutes, we'll pull back another layer of this historical engineering thriller. This is the hidden story of German. Scientists couldn't believe American stealth design outsmarted early warning. Grids. The race begins now. By early 1943, Europe had become a cage of steel and electrons, as Allied bombers battered German factories, cities, and railroads with unrelenting force. The Luftwaffe scrambled to regain control of the skies. Radar, known by its acronym Funkmaskerat, was the heart of this defense. Its invention widely hailed as Germany's invisible shield. Early warning stations such as the iconic Würzburg and Freya arrays stretched across the length of Western Europe their massive wire frames probing the clouds for American aircraft. Hundreds of thousands of lives hung in the balance. Every minute gained by radar meant another squadron could be scrambled before the bombers arrived. To protect its industries and population, Germany invested in what one engineer called the eyes and ears of victory. More than 2,000 radar stations blanketed the Atlantic coast, each connected to sprawling command centers via high-frequency radio and encrypted teletype lines. Würzburg, the backbone of this network, could detect aircraft flights at ranges up to 40 kilometers, pinpointing their position within 200 meters. Freya, with its broad parabolic dish, reached out to 120 kilometers. Together they formed a web so dense that American pilots started calling the channel the Wall of Static. And yet, America refused to yield. Allied generals and engineers alike knew that the Battle of the Atlantic and ultimately the fate of Europe depended not just on muscle, but on technical wizardry. By late 1942, the toll of lost bombers had reached a tipping point. Nearly 80% of daylight raids ended in disaster, with German interceptors guided in by those radar eyes. The challenge was daunting. These radars operated on precise wavelengths, typically around 530 Maurenkirchts to 600 Maurus for Würzburg sending out constant pulses that bounced from the metal frames of B-17s, B-24s, and their British Lancaster allies. The echo of each pulse was mapped and tracked by skilled operators, who used triangulation techniques, often with the help of nearby anti-aircraft batteries, to plot courses, estimate bomb run timings, and issue interception orders. So what could possibly shake this ironclad defense? How might one nation's engineers unweave this vast electronic net from halfway across the world? The answer was not brute force, but stealth, an art so subtle, so technically challenging, that some even doubted its existence. Yet, as the Allies prepared for the most daring raids of the war, a handful of American engineers at MIT's storied radiation laboratory dared to dream the impossible. What if we could make bombers disappear, not from the sky, but from radar itself? The true technical challenge was bigger than any battlefield maneuver. Radar, at its core, relied on electromagnetic reflectivity. When radio waves struck metal, the pulses bounced back with a signature strength determined by the craft's size, shape, and electrical conductivity. American bombers, bristling with defensive turrets, 
Radio antennas and giant aluminum frames were by any measure the perfect target. But within the MIT Rad Lab, the seeds of a radical new tactic were taking root. Drawing on British insights from the window, Operation Bodyline, a countermeasure using strips of metal foil to fake bomber signatures, American teams sought a deeper solution, not to disrupt, but to diminish the aircraft's variability to reflect radar waves. They began to hunt for materials with extraordinary electromagnetic properties. Ferrites, carbon-based paints, and new composite panels were all considered. They analyzed technical measurements, radar cross-section, RCS, signal attenuation curves, and dielectric constants, all in hopes of blinding enemy receivers. In one experiment, engineers covered B-24 mock-ups in radar-absorbing rubber sheets, then blasted them with radar signals from both Würzburg and Freya transmitters. Early results were promising but limited. The rubber helped at certain wavelengths but was heavy and deteriorated fast in cold, moist environments. Next came the breakthrough, a new paint infused with iron oxide nanoparticles. This so-called stealth paint had the unique ability to capture and dissipate electromagnetic energy, converting radar pulses into harmless heat rather than echoing them back to the German arrays. Tests on the MIT campus showed up to a 65% reduction in radar signature at target frequencies, a result almost unbelievable to skeptics at the time. But stealth was more than paint. Airframe geometry became another battlefield. Engineers discovered that flat surfaces and right angles made for the worst radar echoes. Curving contours and angled panels scattered waves unpredictably. Inspired by pre-war British advances in radar evasion, Americans redesigned engine cowlings, tail rudders, and even bomb bay doors to minimize flat, perpendicular surfaces. The result? Bombers that were not just protected by camouflage but by physics itself. These innovations, married to the scale and speed of American industrial output, set the stage for a transformation. The first stealth-equipped squadrons deployed in spring 1944, flying test missions over the channel, under the watchful eyes of both Allied and enemy control towers. The breakthrough arrived on the night of May 11, 1944, during Operation Point Blank, a massive Allied raid against German marshalling yards, oil depots and factories supporting the war effort. As more than 600 aircraft crossed the channel after sunset, the Luftwaffe's network spun into action. Freya outposts sounded alarms. Würzburg stations fixed their beams, searching for the incoming armada. But something was wrong. Experienced radar operators noticed ghost sweeps, unusually weak or distorted blips, shadows where bomber signatures had always appeared. Interceptors scrambled along incomplete plot lines, chasing phantom formations that veered off course or vanished altogether. At the command center in Le Havre, a junior officer reportedly exclaimed, The Americans have disappeared. His words echoing through a midnight hail of encrypted teletype. Primary sources, such as after action reports from Oberkommando der Luftwaffe, confirm the chaos. Over the course of the six hour raid, bombers equipped with stealth paint and modified surfaces reported casualty rates 23% lower than standard squadrons. By dawn, Allied reconnaissance swept in to assess the damage. The main oil depot at Amiens destroyed, rail links severed, and much of the German air response hopelessly off target. The technical victory was underscored by cold, hard numbers. Analysis of intercepted German air defense records revealed that at least four radar stations logged a decrease in detection probability from 85% to only 26% for the modified bombers, almost overnight. Radio traffic recorded severe confusion, with Luftwaffe pilots complaining that their ground controllers lost sightings more than 15 times in a single sortie, even in laboratories far from the front. German scientists began to suspect something extraordinary. A 1944 memo from Dr. Eric Schumann, chief physicist of the Reich Ministry of Armaments, argued the American method impresses beyond expectation, suggesting a paradigm shift in electromagnetic warfare. Some Wehrmacht engineers went so far as to demand emergency funding to develop counter-stealth technologies, too late to shift the tide. With each successful raid, American stealth proved not just a tactical miracle, but a strategic shockwave, shaking the very foundation of German electronic defense. What if the next evolution hides in plain sight?
The battlefield impact echoed not only in ruined factories, but in shattered morale across German engineering circles. Allied bombers surged deeper into protected territory, emboldened by the new invisibility. The Luftwaffe's fighter pilots, once the predatory elite, began reporting phantom raids and ghost formations, unable to coordinate intercepts as early warning grids faltered. The impact wasn't just technical, it was psychological. Radar crews, trained to trust the absolute nature of electromagnetic detection, now faced the possibility that large metal objects could simply slip through the beams. The legendary confidence in Würzburg and Freya was undermined. Even High Command admitted that new enemy measures had made radar unreliable for tracking massed formations. British intelligence, monitoring encrypted traffic, documented a spike in reactive measures, rapid redeployment of radar stations, hurried introduction of secondary visual spotters, and frantic requests for new jamming analyses. In one infamous week, over 11 German anti-aircraft batteries fired in darkness wildly guessing at targets without confirmed radar plots. On the American side, pilots buzzed with rumors. Was it truly stealth or some magic from the boffins at MIT and Lockheed? After action interviews from 1944 included glowing praise for engineering crews, and some bomber captains even began requesting the new paint by name. Nightshade, as they called it, became a prized secret among elite raiding groups. For the enemy, Every failed intercept deepened the crisis. Documents from the German air defense archives recount a month of confusion. Statements like, our radars are blind, dotting internal reports. Morale among engineers plummeted, driving a brief but intense round of resignations and panicked conference calls with headquarters in Berlin. Yet, as the raids continued, American engineers refined their approach. By late summer, even heavier bombers appeared with further reductions in radar signature, and experimental jet fighters began covert deployments sporting new composite shells. The stealth revolution was gathering speed, but what happened when the enemy tried to copy the secret? The legacy of America's stealth innovation stretched far beyond the fiery nights of Europe. As news spread through German technical circles, the race for electromagnetic supremacy accelerated. Enemy physicists scrambled to decode the secrets of radar-absorbing coatings and airframe geometry, launching dozens of research projects, most doomed by limited resources and wartime disruption. In the early fall of 1944, Dr. Werner Heisenberg's institute attempted a hurried imitation using carbon black paint and experimental composite tiles. But Allied intelligence seized the prototypes before they could be deployed. Interrogation records from captured German technicians showed open disbelief. The Americans have done something impossible, one confessed. Meanwhile, technical bulletins circulated among Allied engineering teams, celebrating the success. The concept of radar cross-section, once obscure, became a mainstay in every after-action debrief and design review. MIT's Radiation Lab produced a wave of new publications and classified notes much of which would guide post-war aerospace work for decades. The long-term impact extended to doctrine itself. U.S. Air Force strategists began to incorporate stealth as a central tenet in bomber design and mission planning. By the war's end in May 1945, the concept of electromagnetic camouflage, once the stuff of science fiction, was recognized as essential by several branches of the military. German engineers, many forced into post-war service under Operation Paperclip, became silent witnesses to the stealth revolution they had failed to anticipate. Some even contributed to the next wave of American aerospace breakthroughs, their knowledge reluctantly harnessed in an era defined by open technological competition. And yet the lesson held true. From every failed detection and every shocked enemy engineer, the story of America's stealth unfolded as a testament to the power of innovation in war and peace alike. Stealth didn't end with W. Wu. In fact, every modern radar-defeating fighter, every low-observable drone, owes its pedigree to those frantic, nights and fevered workshops of the 1940s, from the B-2 Spirit's famous flying, wing to the advanced composites of the F-22, Raptor and the skin, coatings of the F-35 Lightning II, the legacy is direct and unbroken. Today, Radar wavelengths span from short microwave bursts to long low-frequency detection systems. Yet the central challenge remains. 
How to Engineer a Flying Machine That's All But Invisible to the Electronic Eye Echoes of W. Wu's breakthroughs resound in every stealth briefing, every classified coding recipe, and every edge-defining design. Engineers still debate the ideal balance between weight, aerodynamics, and reflectivity, armed with technical lessons first written on MIT chalkboards. The enemy's shock, once written in panicked reports and hurried calls, now studies America's stealth evolution with respect and sometimes envy. Russia, China, and Europe chase the elusive magic of invisibility, from strange metamaterials to AI-powered jamming. Yet no rival has erased the edge born from those pivotal months in 1944. The engineering race endures. Every new radar led by the echo of old secrets, so, next time a stealth jet blazes overhead silent, untrackable, a ghost in daylight, remember the story. The innovation wasn't just technical, it was human. Driven by men and women who refused to accept defeat, who turned their understanding of electrons into the greatest military surprise the world had ever seen. The night American bombers outsmarted the grid, shocked German scientists and rewired the rules of detection changed the course of history, forever. Every stealth breakthrough since, every leap into radar invisibility, ties back to that moment. To those who build, strategize, and defend, the lessons of Wavy 2 engineering live on. Now, if you're ready for even deeper secrets and stories from the front lines of military invention, hit subscribe and join the crew that never stops exploring the art of the impossible.